Francois Cabore is a Southern Voices Network scholar with the Wilson Center's Africa program. He's also director of the Jesuit University Institute at the Center for Research and Action for Peace. He joins us today to discuss entrepreneurship, education, and youth employment in Ivory Coast. Francois, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Matt. I want to, I want to ask you uh, about uh, unemployment rates in sub-Saharan Africa. Let's start there. Paint a picture for us of what you're trying to address with this type of education. What is the situation? Well, thank you for this uh, question. Uh, unemployment is a very, very important issue in Africa currently. Uh, the latest uh, 2015 report by the ILO, the International Labour Organization, uh, estimates that 48.7% of the uh, of the youth mm -hmm. is experiencing long-term unemployment, which means they have been unemployed for at least a year. So this is basically what is happening. And of course, there are country um, uh, across country differences. If you look at some countries, it can even be worse. So I would say uh, unemployment is a big issue in Africa currently, and that's why I'm trying to uh, suggest some policy recommendations based on my research here at the Woodrow Wilson Center. So, so tell us a bit about that. I, I know you focused on entrepreneurship education as being a potential solution to this problem. W what is entrepreneurship education? What, what are the particular things that a student would focus on? Uh, that's a, a very nice question because as a matter of fact, uh, what I'm realizing is that people often think that entrepreneurship education is just about a course. Mm -hmm. And actually, a key contribution of my research here uh, based on some data that I collected uh, back in Ivory Coast last summer, is that actually uh, the impact of entrepreneurship education on the decision to become entrepreneurs uh, depends on what you call entrepreneurship education. Mm -hmm. And basically there are two hypotheses that I tested. The first one is to define entrepreneurship education as just a course in entrepreneurship versus the second definition would be creating an ecosystem of entrepreneurship whereby it means having a course, having some other type of trainings, uh, having mentorship, tutoring, and uh, maybe even having some financial uh, education. So depending on how you define it, entrepreneurship education, you would see that the impacts are very different. So is to, it, would it be safe to guess that that second example is the one that is, is potentially more effective? You got it right. So, creating an entire almost environment or attitude and will change. Exactly. As a matter of fact, you know, a lot of people uh, try to say, hey, we want to create, uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurship. Uh, we want to promote entrepreneurship. And what they end up doing is to put a course in entrepreneurship here and there. Then they are surprised that at the end of the day, there's no impact. So, yes, uh, given that definition that I just gave, what I'm trying to promote is to say, if we want to care about entrepreneurship education, we should rather think about creating an ecosystem of entrepreneurship to allow for entrepreneurship to thrive. Will this require uh, training the trainers, so to speak? You've got to work with the educators fundamentally. Mm -hmm. It's not just a simple, single curriculum to be implemented. Absolutely. Uh, I put it as uh, working with all the stakeholders, that is, uh, the students, the professors, even, I would say, even parents, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, the, uh, the civil society that is surrounding the education uh, places. That's the first aspect. The second aspect is what I call integrating the triple helix, that is the government, um, the private sector, and um, the universities. Because sometimes what we, what we can easily do in higher education is to train people without talking to the private sector while this private sector is actually those who know on the ground what is happening. Mm -hmm. So yes, integrating all these people will make sure that uh, all the stakeholders will make sure that the education is appropriate. So this is a big job. So, so where do you begin? Where do you begin? This is a, a wonderful question. And actually to do so, this you are addressing the second part of my research, <laughs> which is about how to mainstream entrepreneurship education in higher education. Because if we found out that entrepreneurship education as we defined it matters and can actually solve the issue of unemployment, then how do we do it? And basically my time uh, here in Washington DC uh, was also to uh, talk with policymakers, those who are in higher education um, and trying to um, make changes at higher education level. And I think there from what I've, I've got from um, the inputs is that we really need to have some synergy, to involve all the stakeholders. So to start 
uh, from allowing everyone to have a voice so that together we can move things forward. And what is your sense? Is there support for this or interest in this idea? I would think so. Uh, there is support for the simple reason that um, whether it's from the government, from the donors, everyone has interest in this happening. The governments, they know that uh, with such a high unemployment rate, this is what you need for social unrest and political instability. For the donors, they want also to get the best out of their dollars. They are investing a lot of money, and um, you know the figures show that also uh, show also that currently in Africa course and in many other countries in Africa, those who are having higher education, they are two to three times more likely to be unemployed than other people. More likely to be unemployed. More likely to be unemployed, which means that actually the money invested in education is completely yeah not working. Should I at all. say it's not working? So. Uh, of course, the donors are very, they have interest in that, the government have interest in that, the students also. So all the stakeholders have interest in this thing working properly. So let's assume the best case scenario, that you get a lot of interest from all those three layers of society that you say are critical in this regard. Mm -hmm. How long will it take to move forward and, and how soon could you expect to see results? Um, I think this is really the, uh, what makes investment in human capital difficult. You know, if you take some money and then you put in bonds or, or not bonds, but let's say in actions, you get some shares, then, you know, maybe after a year you would get some, re some results. This is not a short term. This uh, is not a return. short term investment. Yeah. So when you, you try to educate students, uh, you really want to think in the long term. But for sure, uh, we already see some results because, uh, for example, in Serap in Abidjan, we have a program in entrepreneurship and we have seen that some of the people who are involved in what I would call default entrepreneurship, that is, they fall into entrepreneurship without being prepared to it and without choosing to do it. They end up developing uh, uh, firms and enterprises that are very successful. So I think in the long run we will see the results, but you know, two, three years is enough to see really concrete uh, results of uh, such an investment. So I know your, your term at the Wilson Center will conclude in about a month. Uh, when you return to Africa, what is your plan to uh, spread the word and try to encourage people to get on board? Well, uh, to be honest with you, this has been an incredible time for me and uh, just benefiting from the uh, resources at the Woodrow Wilson Center was just terrific for my work. Um, and of course, uh, when I go back, uh, I hope to keep in touch with the Woodrow Wilson Center first and second, to continue networking with, uh, um, with the alumni. You know, we had, uh, I had a, the, the opportunity to meet with wonderful people in the uh, Southern, uh, Southern Voices Network here uh, at the center. And I think, uh, although some of our research was different, there were some uh, opportunities to, to collaborate, to enrich each other. So I definitely hope to keep in touch with them. Uh, and also to tell people that, okay, if I'm able to show this type of results is because I benefited from the environment of the Woodrow Wilson Center. And I hope that, and I'm sure, that other scholars uh, like me would like to benefit from such an opportunity. Well, Francois, it's been a, a pleasure having you here. And of course, we'll stay in touch and wishing you continued success. Thank Thanks. you so much for having me.